broadcast stream mix. Say something for me, please. Hello, sir. Howdy doody. All right, there we go. So we got that. Is it, is, is it working? Properties. We're going to go with music. Okay. I think I'm everything should be, should, should be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're mostly good. I just wanted to... Um, I don't know what's going on with my OBS, but it's not saving my setups anymore for some yeah, reason. Yeah, it was doing that for a while for me, too. I don't know. Why, I, I can't remember what fix I did, though. I don't know. I'm sure with the next update or whatever the fuck it's going to be, um, we'll all be good. Now, let's see if I can actually play some stream beats here. And no. Okay, so we're rolling without it. That's fine. Okay, so happy Monday. <laughs> happy Monday. Woo! What a beautiful um, start to a, a traumatic work week. It, are your work weeks life. traumatic? No, not really, but it's another like gaping hole in my life. Why is that, do you think? I mean, it's the expect... You know, I, I, it's interesting when you grow up, as you get older, you work towards a goal of what you expect your life to be, mm. and then you get to your goal... And it's like, it's not, none of my life is really bad. I actually really enjoy what I do, but it's just the expectation of what I, my life would be like versus the reality is very different. Like but what did, what did you expect your life to be like? And what I is expected, it now? I wouldn't even say what I expected. It's more like, how do I put, when you're in college and you're going through like the grind of like suffering of like, you're working towards like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to have a cool car. Right. I'm going to have a wife. I'm going to have hey, all this money. Nessie. Sorry, I just cut you off yeah. there. I'm sorry. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. What's going on, and then Ness? You, How are you? You get it, and it's kind of like, this is it. It's just the same It's just the same stuff you were doing with just more money. But isn't that mm -hmm. kind of the goal? Same stuff yeah, but with more money? It's, it, it's the same stuff, but the expectation versus reality. You, you, you know, it's like... um. Yeah, but you know how in the in end of movies how they make it, they beat the villain and then mm -hmm. the movie's over. Yeah. You ever think about what happens after that? All the time. Like, like yeah, when no, he gets I, the princess, I actually do. The like, yeah. like what what happens after the Avengers beat Loki and they had to start cleaning up New York? Yeah, like what if the, what if Avengers had just ended there and there right. was no other, other? Yeah, what is life like? Mm. Do they just live their life? Does, does Captain America sweep the floor? Does he like work do parking? So, you think about these so I, I actually have thought many thoughts on this. Um, speaking of many thoughts, Ness says that she's had many life changes. Good, good life changes, bad life changes. Good, I hope. Um, I would love to hear about them. Yeah, let us know. Uh, but like I've, so Paige and I have been talking about this a lot because mm -hmm. she's not particularly thrilled with her job. Mm -hmm. And so for her, the like you've made it or you you're doing what you you've made you've reached the goal and now it's like, okay, what am I supposed to do from here? And we've kind of realized that like there's a lot more to life than just hitting each goal. And See, that's what I'm that's that's what I was gonna question you about. But we're, but we're hold on. Oh sorry, yeah, gotcha. Hold on, because there there's a caveat to that. Yeah. There always has to be like I, her and I are wired. I'm not going to say polar opposites, but we're wired very differently. I'm very goal oriented. And like, I will always like for a really long time, I chased money as not the money. Wasn't the goal. The money was the means to an end. Like for me, if society could exist and I could drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis and buy whatever the fuck I wanted or obtain whatever the fuck I wanted without needing money. Money is not the competition or the, the, the end game for me, but like it gets me the things that I want, the vacations, the computer, the house, the, the time that I can spend with my family. We're right? similar in that aspect. Cause I've so, told it. Money is just a tool to get what I want. I, right. I, I think I would keep hitting it. Yeah. So the thing, so when I was, uh, when her and I first met within the first year, I changed jobs, right? I went from working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car to a company called Paychex. And it was a life-changing job, right? And I'm also, uh, for, I, it was suggested to me that I listen to this audiobook 
uh, called Relentless. And it, there's a lot of sports references in it. I'm not a big sports guy. Um, <laughs> but there are things in it that kind of resonate with me because of the way that I'm wired. I'll put it to you that yeah. way. And so I started working for Paychex. And within the first year, I went from making what I was making in Enterprise Rent-A-Car to more than doubling that, right? And going from like learning and training and so on and so forth to being one of the highest performing reps in the company in that division. And so I kept pushing the envelope until I hit that goal Right. Like I was one of the top performers, if not the top, I was the top on my team. And then once I realized that, like, all right, it's a been there, done that type of deal more than two or three times, everything started getting boring. And so what would end up happening is I would end up having bad months because I was focusing on different things that interested me. I And that's how, like, I ended up kind of really diving hardcore into apex for example because it was something that was new i didn't really know much about it and i wanted to learn as much as i possibly could and so i kind of approach a lot of the things that i do in life that way where there's always like once i hit the goal then it's like nice to sit for a minute and then what's next and that has always that that balance has always been the struggle for me of being able to focus on that next goal and not just kind of have to hit a hard reset button if that makes any okay. sense i kind of get what you're saying i kind of get what you're saying like i'm always and, and she's kind of wired in the opposite way where it's like okay once we hit a certain point, we should be taking a step back and relaxing and, you know, like just she not not minimalism, but like, yes, minimalism in a way, whereas I'm always like I want to have. What's the best way to put this without sounding like ridiculous? I want to be able to do everything that I want to I, I want to have my cake and eat it, too. And I, I want to do whatever I need to get done to make that happen. And what ends up happening along the way is that you hit like certain plateaus or you hit certain goals. And then what's really important, and this is kind of the like double edged sword of like life in general. Um, you you hit your goal and then you you need to get back on the hamster wheel. Like I, I crave getting back on the hamster wheel. It's weird. Is um, it the stability of it? Is that what you think it is? The stability of what? Like, like when you're, you know, when you're goal oriented, you're so pushed to do certain things. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to word this correctly. You're so like driven towards like an goal. It's like the carrot at the end of the wheel, kind of. What well, the carrot at the end of the wheel? The carrot at the end of the, the line, kind of thing. You're all like the structure of it keeps you pushing forward. So it gives your life kind of its own purpose in a way, small bits and pieces of purpose. Yeah. Like you're, defi you're defining your existence through like actions and like achievements. It, yes. But the achievements don't necessarily have to be what you think they are. Like they, they don't have to be the like uh stat. I, I don't care about status. I don't care about recognition. I want to know that I've done something. So a, a perfect example, I took a massive risk. I quit my job. Um, there's no stability in that. Uh, and I decided to start my own or or become an independent agent for insurance. And it's yeah. it's still something that I'm sorting through. And what's interesting is I'm looking five steps past that. Once this starts to get boring, how do I not have to burn it all to the ground, but but restart that goal process to keep things moving? Um. So it's interesting because like I don't hate what I do either. Like I, I'm not like I'm not jumping out of bed like ah sell insurance today. Um, but I'm also not like uh, 
another day at the Ryan. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like I'm not like I gotta go to work today. Um, and so I feel like even though my life at 34 is not what I pictured it would be when I was say 22, uh, or even 24 or 30. It's not bad either. You know, like, it's not a bad thing that it turned out differently. It's not a bad thing that, like, uh, everything shook out the way that it did with the the pandemic, getting laid off, getting a, a job outside of my industry, then deciding to go back into the insurance industry and, like, really approaching things differently. Um. And ultimately, it feels like I'm moving in the right direction for things to pay off the way that they're supposed to. I mean, the end goal is your, is your own personal happiness. I, I agree with that. Absolutely. So, that I mean, I, that, that was a long-winded way of saying, like, things don't always need to work out the way that you plan them. I, I don't think in life things are always going to work out the way you plan them. I think that's no, kind they're of never the going to work out. That's kind of the point of life, though. No, they're never going to work out the way you plan them, but they'll work out. Um but yeah, so Ness, you said that this sounds very familiar. Yeah, she she just hopped in mine and then hopped in yours. She's fucked up in between. <laughs> yeah. You could you could you could pick one. I, I won't be offended. Um But yeah, so I yeah, I mean I, I personally I have both of you open. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh man, you're do 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 wielding here, sir. <laughs> I turned my my fault. I was listening to it you were talking. I turned some music on real quick. I was getting kind of like, uh, oh. no, that's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all but, I mean, good, man. Existence is such, that's when like we're. I know we we want to flow into this flow, this into dreams too. But it's it, it kind of ropes together in kind of like your physical life dreams and then the things you sleep about at night. They kind of flow into each other because I know humans just have a weird way of defining your existence. Like as a person. And I was talking, I think I was talking to somebody today about this at work. Mm-hmm. I was like, if I do bad at this job, I don't take this as an indictment on myself as a person. Like mm-hmm. my failures aren't an indictment of my character. Like I'm more than just this. Like some people tie their whole existence to say work or kids or games or this for other a while, person. I'll, I'll be honest with you for a while. That was me. Yeah, and I, and, and, and I when, struggle when, to peel myself back from my ability to not necessarily work in general, but my ability to provide for my family. That's, that's a big thing. It's a lot of it has to do with mothers. And I think working men, a lot of times I see that's the the two components. Am I defined by my children's ability to be successful adults? And am I defined as my ability to provide for my family? But you have to ask yourself as a person, like, are you, are you about, Falco, the, the work. Thing, you, you could just the say, you could say my Frank, name. I don't are you, care. Are you Frank this? Are you Frank that? Or are you just Frank Falco? You that right. person, right? And that that's kind of like the come to Jesus moment that like ha, has slowly happened over the course of many months over it's the past epiphany. year. Yeah. Well, for me, it was like a slow burn type of deal, and it was a lot yeah. of like. Um, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing right now without Paige. Like, all kidding aside, all like, I mean, that's a very, it sounds like, oh, that's such a nice thing to no, say but about your wife. But, it work. like, legitimately, like, I would be, my world would have changed if, let's say, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I my path was exactly the same, but Paige and I never crossed paths. Let's say that that was, and, and I went the same, made all, all the same other decisions that I made except that one thing was different, right? I would have a very different... I would have had to go about doing what I'm doing now drastically different. Like, like drastically. What's that? How much y'all work as a team? I think that's a testament. No, I I mean, that's kind of my point is that like she made a lot of things happen for me. And I'm hoping to make a lot of things happen for her so she can quit her job soon. Um, but. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there we go. There we go. Boom. Um, yeah. Now, 
Shout out to Blondie. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what was I going to say? So, dreams. The way that I would tie that back, like, I, I was actually thinking about this because, like, prior to us firing up stream and starting to talk, I, I was dragging through, like, the last hour or so because, like, I... <laughs> I, well, I normally take a nap around 2 o'clock in the afternoon every day. Mm-hmm. It just happens. I get tired around that time. It's your toddler, little toddler nap. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's my little toddler nap. I'm a little person. It's okay. Uh, so, <laughs> I I didn't take a nap today because I was working through uh, a couple different technical issues with work. And they they sorted out like towards the end of the day. And I was like, ah, this is not great. Not a great time to actually sit down and take a nap but uh so i didn't take my nap at two o'clock and i texted you and said hey give me 15 minutes because i was going to take like a quick power nap right i had like four dreams in that nap yeah i was gonna you know it's funny i think about that a lot because i remember when i went i did um a sleep study and when i was talking to the doctor about it you're not supposed to dream unless you're hitting REM, so like deeper right. sleep. yeah but I, I remember i told the doctor i was like i dream so vividly for like date, like small naps or yep. like like mini little power naps or like in the car. Sometimes I, I, I sleep for work. I used to have like a small little dream there. She's like, no, you don't. You're just saying that. I'm like, no, but I really no, do. A hundred percent. Like there are times where I've taken like little power naps in the afternoon. I'm out for like maybe 10 minutes some of these times and I wake up and I've forgotten where I am because yep. I got I've ripped been... out of a dream by my alarm and i'm like what the fuck is going on where very, am i like where the fuck am i and i that wasn't exactly what happened like i don't think i fully fell asleep because i was kind of aware of the fact that i was dreaming and like where i was physically a little while ago but uh they were still like I was uh shoot now I'm starting to forget the dream already. You know, that's another oh. thing. I I read why I was watching a podcast uh, or a video on why you forget your dreams before just as a quick sidebar. Um and apparently when you're dreaming even though your brain is super duper active, a part of your brain that's not active is uh long-term memory. Like there's a really? a hormone or a, a, a portion of your brain that is not active, that's its its purpose is to commit things to memory. So what ends up happening, it, to put it in like computer terms, um, your dreams would be like what's stored on RAM, right? Oh, so and, it's just like user data each right so there there's that's nothing and there's nothing that's it, it's like uh typing word doc up but never saving it right like you forget to hit save and then you close out of word and that document's gone forever right mm-hmm. because it was there on the ram and then you never like told the computer to put it in you know your hard drive and you so didn't click save. right yeah. you didn't click save and so like that's kind of what happens with dreams so you you get that like after image of portions of the dream but sometimes it does save and sometimes your brain does remember it for some reason and we're not apparently sure why isn't it interesting you remember this is an interesting one for me is that you remember nightmares more than you remember a dream uh yeah so that very vividly remember so vividly remember a nightmare according to what i saw and i'm not an expert in this in any way you and your uh, quack doctor articles yeah well it could be he could be a quiet wherever i i read this a long time ago so i can't even tell you where to find it um but because of the adrenaline that comes out in those dreams huh it it's like uh it like hijacks your brain into remembering it. That's because I can very vividly remember almost all my nightmares I've ever had. Yeah. So Ness, I'm not talking about the psychology of it. Like, what does this dream mean versus like, uh, yeah, we're just, I'm we're saying like just, just the, the exactly just the fact that you 
have the dream, you remember the dream or not, and why you might, re- like the physiology of why you might remember it. I think it also has something to do with, um, oh. I know it has something to so, do with so, an, an, an active mind. I know, like, that's why children dream more, because ch- children have more active minds. Uh, yes, they do. Yeah. Uh, same thing applies to when we're more likely to recall negative experiences than happy ones. Well, with something like that, it, yeah, exactly, actually. Because typically we, I'm pretty sure, and don't quote me, you you might be better versed in this than I am, but I'm pretty sure the reason that we recall negative experiences more uh, vividly or more readily is because of the fact, it, like the survival instinct from like, years gone where uh we like the idea of something negative was like for self-preservation there's See, also a debate I've, that if we finish the dream we're not likely to remember it whereas if it's incomplete we won't i've actually heard a different startled a different thing i've heard that like old people the way why certain old people remember certain things like a year being terrible or a year being good mm. is because your mind only stores vital information it can only handle so much information and so the older and memories get you you start to only remember like the most important or the most like extreme versions of situations so say for example if you were if you were in the 80s and your child was born in the 80s you got married in the 80s um you you had a bunch of good parties in the 80s and then cocaine and then (laughs) but like your mind is only going to process the the most extreme but you don't remember the arguments you had like on march when you and your husband first got married or the time the dog peed on the floor, right. you don't remember dropping the groceries or like all the little, the little inklings of like a bad year. You just remember the most extreme versions of situations. Yeah, no, I, so that's I like, for it's sure. like the rose tinted, the rose tinted glasses effect. That's why you remember certain things is better than they were because right. you don't remember like the small, like negative bit. Cause most times in me, in reality, negative situations in your life aren't that extreme. Like me, right. like if I think about all the bad things that happened in my life, mm-hmm. and I put it in like a group. Really, truly speaking, it's maybe a minute part of my life. It's it's most of my life is just kind of a dull sludge forward. And then Wait, hold, some positive. Hold, hit pause yeah, no for problem. one second, I think. Getting home. Give me one second. I'll be right back. No problem. Take time. Hello, everyone. How do you be? Drop some questions in chat. My new stream name is Coochie Couture 415. Um, go ahead and ask your questions. I'm just playing. Don't, it's, <laughs> don't go there. Sorry about that. Paige was... Oh. <laughs> I realized... Tell her I said hi when you get a chance. Well, she'll be up here in a second putting her laptop back on her computer. Uh, oh, she's actually going to come. Where is she going to see her? Oh, my God. What's that? Where is she going to see her? Oh, my God. She's going to see me. She's not going to be on oh. The stream. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. No, no, no. Her computer's over there. <laughs> I already hacked it, so I already knew what, what y'all guys said. So don't worry. <laughs> Already hacked in the house, buddy. It's okay. I fucking hate climbing all those stairs so many. It's good. It's good cardio, man. Yeah. Look at it like out of fucking shape, bro. <laughs> You're not out of shape. You're perfect. Oh my god, no. Just the no. way you so, are. So, so as a That's side a conversation, note. we should we should have that. We should have a conversation about that about the, the view of male <laughs> physiology and how like <laughs> we look at because I feel like it's a lot of red pill dudes that do that now. What's like, that? You have, to have a, you have to have a six pack abs and like a dig down to the floor to be a perfect man, but like unrealistic 
I mean, yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm saying that that's a conversation I want to have. It's, it's very interesting to me. All right, we'll we'll table that for eight thirty. We'll go into that when we finish okay. our dreams conversation. Hey, um, keep it going. Keep it going. What's up? I was saying keep. Like, I was I was making like an Italian salesman accent. <laughs> yeah, keep it going. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, it wasn't funny. Um, so. Uh, there's also the debate that if we finish a dream and this is what Ness said in the chat she probably put it in yours too there's also the debate that if we finish a dream we are not likely to remember it whereas if it's incomplete we won't because we're startled awake yeah um, that's interesting huh it it is and actually uh, there's a show on Netflix I think it was like brain something or other one of the like brain documentaries they have a sleep guy on he said if you and he like studies dreams and he said if you want to remember your dreams his recommendation is right before you go to bed drink three large glasses of water and inevitably people go yeah they make that face and they go why would i drink three large glasses of water i can barely hold my i can barely hold my urine in the car let alone in the bed that's exactly that's exactly why he says to do it he says, if you drink three large glasses of water, you're likely to have to get up and go to the bathroom a lot. And we go in and out of REM sleep and in and out of dreaming multiple times throughout the night. And if you have to constantly get up to go pee, you're more likely to be interrupted during one of your dreams, which makes it apparently easier to remember. And so that deliberately triggers you to wake up in the middle of the dream. I mean, it sounds weird, but it's like, it, uh, I understand your logic there, guy. <laughs> I, I respect it. I, I mean, I'm not going to tell him no. Who am I? But yeah. Lowly I mean, Jer- Lowly Jairus, <laughs> dreamy. Yeah, you already let the, let it out of the yeah, bag. Already, there, yeah, my name know. is, my name is Jairus Contavious Caldwell Pope. So there's my full name. No, it's really not that much. It's not my name. Yeah, I know. That's fine. I'm not going to blow up this clot. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so that was his recommendation, that you drink three large glasses of water because it causes you to wake up multiple times in the night, mm-hmm. which will then inadvertently but most likely cause you at one point or another, you're going to wake up in the middle of a dream, and you're going to remember it, and then he would say, keep a notebook next to your bed, write the dream down even before you go to the bathroom, because in that time, you can forget about the dream. Now, I had... and. I I don't think I could forget this dream because of how bizarre it was. This was not today. So uh, before Paige moved in, I lived in this house alone. And I was asleep. Like I, I had gotten home one night. I was laying in bed. I put the Formula One race on because I oh, DVR'd good. it. A recipe for disaster right there. That's going straight to sleep. No, I, I mean, I love Formula One, but I was no. tired. And like I'd already seen the race. It was honestly, it was just background noise for me. I like to fall. We both like to fall asleep with the TV on. So like we'll put on comedy specials that we've seen like a hundred times just to have like the background noise going. Um, it's weird. We She sets a sleep timer. It's usually on for an hour. Um, and then we just fall asleep. It's interesting that y'all do that because I do. I have to go to sleep with music. Or like, I remember when I was in college because I said I would would be so active because my mm-hmm. mind was like on school. I would have to sleep to like the sound of a fan or like water. It's it's like that, but there's also a little bit of light and stuff like that. Like, um, she's not a huge fan. It doesn't bother me as much. It doesn't bother me at all. But she's not. Paige isn't a huge fan of the uh, air cleaner that we have. So. Like she, she feels like it's too much white noise. Um, but so I we put that. the TV on and we fall asleep. So I, I got home, I was laying in bed. I put the race on, all the lights were off and I'm asleep in bed and in the dream. Hi. No, you're not Hello. interrupting. Dreamy Hello, says hi, Paige. Paige. What's up, homie? Wait, wait, hold on. Say that again. I said, when are you coming to visit us? Um, I don't know. I'll try September. I'm a really good. She's, I'm really gonna, gonna, gonna try September. September. 
She said, good. She gave a thumbs up. Cool, cool beans. <clears throat> definitely enjoy. He said, cool, cool beans. Ness says hi too. She says hi, Naz. Um, <coughs> so, uh, hold on for one second. <laughs> I you were, I was muted when I asked that. So I just I asked Paige if she. I, I went. Can you please put water on my Yeti for me? And she goes, Yeah, it's fine. I only have why Lyme's make, disease. Why did you? Why did this is a thing? Why did you make it when you asked her? You tried to like fake this cute face, like you didn't do what you were talking to. What you were talking to, you just like. But like when you said it to us, you were like, "Please put water on it." Like you didn't do that. Like why? Cause, you, cause, cause, no, no, no. That was the voice that I made when I when I asked oh, her. I, oh, okay. I muted her. Okay. I muted myself when I asked her. Mm-hmm. So maybe I didn't make the face, but you know it is. That's what it so is. funny. Try to do your little. Was it Puss in Boots face when you yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so in the dream, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm laying in bed. I'm watching the F1 race. It's daytime. Paige is walking around. I'm talking to her. Whatever, whatever. And like the F1 race is like vividly in my dream. Paige's voice is vividly in my dream. I can see her in my dream. I'm having a conversation with her. I blink in the dream. And when I open my eyes, I open them in reality. And it was just a dark room with the F1 race on. That's interesting. Like it was like that. I woke up. Like the dream was exactly what was happening like it was anchored to that f1 race right but it was the most bizarre thing i was like what the fuck just happened to me um thank you sweetheart (laughs) she's getting in her cardio in now that's so cute i walked downstairs before when i called you 83 Oh, oh, her heart, she's not getting enough cardio. Her heart rate's only 83 BPM. Tell her if she wants to, I can chase her around the block a couple times with a ski mask on to, like, get her cardio up if she wants. Dreamy offered to chase you around the block with a ski mask on and get your cardio up. She said, Just perfect. Kind of Just what she's looking for. She needed the extra motivation. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I just thought of this random TikTok I saw last night. I don't know why I thought of this. And it was like... What did it say? It was like, God, men should have a curfew nowadays so women can go out and enjoy themselves. <laughs> it was some like I don't know why this is like hella racist, but it was like a dark he was like darker than me and he was like in a dark room. He's mm-hmm. like, You think that curfew's gonna stop me? Was, <laughs> that's so funny to me. That actually was so and if anything that's pretty that, funny. that that's that that funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh Bro, god. Like all you saw was like his people. It was I couldn't lie, that shit was funny. That shit was funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Bro, I was like, if I was a woman, I saw that around the block, bro, I'd pee myself. I'd like, I'd like expire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So That should be a conversation one day. Like, do you think you can make it out of a horror movie? I know I wouldn't. I'd die. I mean, I, define the horror movie. Like, are we talking like horror movie we should lo- do that. We should Are we talking about of- horror movie logic? Or are we talking about like... If you, if you were randomly dropped into a horror movie, do you think you can make it out? A hundred percent, and and I get to retain normal like logic, normal logic and skills. A hundred percent, I would make it out. Oh, you have so much faith. I would die. I know I would die. A hundred percent, I would make it. You would too. Any normal person. I mean, no, 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 no. That's why oh, yeah, I said the, yeah, the logic. That you're all right though. The logic though. You are that, right. That's what I'm saying. Like if you can retain you know? normal logic. Yeah. Nine out of ten people would survive a horror movie. If we, like, def- I think we, save we gotta for, the movie, save for like Saw, Zombie. you might not make it out of Saw because I'd, I'd make it. I'd make it out well, of Saw. Well, yeah, but you'd have to do something fucking horrible to yourself. What's worse than working a nine to five? <laughs> what could he do to me? Did you have you seen the meme uh, or the the post? I don't know what the fuck it was. Mm. It was like so you find yourself trapped in a room. With an exact clone of yourself. They have all the same memories, same experiences, same everything. Exact clone of yourself. Only one of you can leave the room. How do you decide who makes it out? And then the next line is like, well, 
I would say, you know what? I've wanted this a lot longer than you have. You've just been alive. I've wanted this so much longer than you did. Here's my wallet, keys, ID. Good luck. <laughs> I would lay on the ground and I'd be like, bro, I think finally you... I can... I. I can rest. Yeah, like, you can exactly. Go, you can go live all this hor- horrible existence. I'd be like, there you go, man. This is what I've always... Is there, I Best of a way luck that we, to you. We both, we both could make it so we could alternate days. Like, if we could just somehow make that work. Like, he could work one day, I could work one day. <clears throat> it no, has no, to be no, a way no, to make no. that. that uh, it's not the way this works. Um, <sighs> so, yeah. That was the most bonkers dream that I've ever had because it was so... Like, the transition from dream to reality like think of it think of it this way literally right now you're sitting at your desk you're talking to me you blink all of a sudden you've woken up like you shut your eyes to blink and when you open them you realize the whole thing was a dream bro that would trip me that would trip me out so that's bad. legitimately what happened to me that's so trippy i i was so weirded out like i got up I was walking around the house. I'm like, Paige, like I, I was so like I, I needed to make sure that I was alone because I was like, did what the fuck? I, I was literally saying to myself, what the fuck just happened? I and was it was like, about, that's it, so weird. It was like two o'clock in the morning, so like I couldn't just call Paige and like expect her to answer and not be angry. Mm-hmm. Or or not think that something is horribly wrong. You know what I mean? So I like walked around the house like, what the fuck just happened to me? And then of course, getting back to bed, I'm like, how the fuck do I go to sleep now? Like like am I am I awake right now? Was I awake before? Like what what it really for like an hour or so messed with my like anchor to your reality. Per- your percent. I've had dreams like that where it was, I was so tied in what I was doing. Like I couldn't, I remember one time when I was a kid and I, don't, I think my cousin did this. I think cause he, he admitted to me later he was doing one doing this shit. <laughs> um, so I had been like picking on my little cousin. Right. And then we watched, we watched, like, I forgot what ghost movie it was. It was some ghost movie. But, like the ghost was like killing people in their sleep. Okay. And it wasn't it wasn't Friday the 13th. It was another movie. It was like some Asian horror movie. Freddy Krueger? <laughs> not Friday the 13th, most not famous yeah. nightmare fucking... Was, I, think it, I think it was Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it was. But um, what happened was, I was like, I had been like beating him up for like like forever. Like, you know, all cousins do. He was like hitting me. I was hitting him. <clears throat> of course. So I was like 16, like 16, 15. And this is, I, I remember this. I'm, I'm going to tell two nightmare stories. All right. Um, I kept waking up. I would have the nightmare about the ghost. And then I wake up with my hand around my throat like this. <laughs> and I was like, there's no way I keep doing this. Like it happened three times in one night. Legit. I slept face down and woke up face up with my hand on my throat. And I was like, bro. And I was like, I been, I just couldn't go to sleep. I just had to stay up the rest of the night. And so the next day we had, we ended up going like, like out to hang out, like to the arcade and go karting. And I was so groggy and depressed. I couldn't even focus. That's and I hilarious. Think later, on, later on at some point, I remember I talked to that same family member. And he was like, I did something and you just don't know it. You can't remember. So I think that's what he was. I think that was him. He was getting me back. And then oh, one, of course. I had this one friend in, in high school. I he was like the friend where like I don't know if you have one of these where his like it was like his house was really dysfunctional, but you could go there and like if you didn't want to be at your house you could go there and just chill out. You could always be there all day, and it'd be like no problems. Uh some, some, I, I understand. What, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I didn't want to be home and his house is dysfunctional, but you could go to his house, just go in his room. We play like Like no one will notice you there. Yeah. Video right. games all day. We bring bring go get snacks, but his room was completely filthy. I'm talking oh. old cereal and food all over the floor, eating no, his no, clothes. No. So <clears throat> I think one night it was a storm on like I used to I walk there and then it was a storm on the way home. So I'll just I'll say I'll just sleep. And like he was like sure, and he took his bed, and I just like literally took my coat, I moved some shit out of the floor, and took my coat and floated <laughs> on the floor, and then like went to sleep. And I had a dream that a woman was rubbing my chest, like like this, uh huh. And like she was doing like this, and but then like she got like really scary looking, and I woke up, and it was a fucking roach on my chest. Oh no! And that, my friend, is how I walked home at five o'clock in the morning in the in, dark, in the rain. No, it had stopped raining by that point, but it was like one of those like 
whatever could kill me on the way home is not going to be worse than what was in that room. Oh my god, that yeah. sounds horrible. 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 I, I literally, like, if that happened to me, I probably would have woken up screaming. I didn't, not not I, I because didn't, of the dream. I always do the, like, I don't, I do the, the, the bitch guy thing whenever shit like that happens. Like, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. And then I, you got man up, you'd be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? But no, like, at no, the moment, I, I, woke, I woke up and I, like, threw him. I threw the roach and I got up and I, I got up and, like, flicked the light switch on. He was like, bro, what? And I was like, bro, a bug got on me. He was like, what? And like, we, we started looking around the room for it and we couldn't find it. And he was like, whatever. And he just flipped the, the and I went, see ya. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't be here. Because the risk of that roach getting on me again is too high for me. That's too much. That's too little, much little did you know, plot twist, the roach hitchhiked in your jacket. Bro, what if the roach, like, what if the roach has been following me this whole time? What like if, my life companion. What, what about this? What if the roach is like Joe's apartment? What if the roach was dreaming? Do you know what Joe's apartment is? I've never no. What does that mean? All right, it's it's a a movie like it's an older movie, mm -hmm. but it's about this guy that gets a an apartment in New York, mm -hmm. and he has a roach problem, and he finds out that the roaches can talk, and like he wages this war against them. And then eventually ends up making friends with the like colony of roaches because like they can talk. <laughs> He's just not from New York. Like that's like a normal New York thing. Well, like yeah, you got to see the movie. You got to see the yeah. movie. It's a funny I'm, movie. I'm, I'm just funny how that movie got pitched. We're gonna make a movie about roaches. Where are we going to the movie at? Oh, New York. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. It's not just a movie about roaches. It's about. The hold on, let me let me let me no, find. No, I'm just saying that's a I very gotta, no, 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 no. Like, hold on, hold on. You you lit this candle, let it burn. Yeah, I'm Joe's just gonna make a point apartment. though. If I was gonna make a stereotypical movie about New Yorkers, <laughs> like talking roaches is like such a like dig on them. Like that just seems like a weird <laughs> slight. Like if I, you know what I'm saying, I don't know how that that went through. Like if it was like I'm gonna make a movie about L.A. and it's gonna be about mean Mexican and white people. Oh, that's just very <laughs> fitting. For like talking roaches is too kind of a little bit too on the nose for making fun of New York people. Because that's right, the no, joke no, no, we no. Hold on. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, uh, let me see. Is this the the whole plot? Talking roaches in New York. I'm, so I'm, I, I'm looking for like a brief synopsis that won't give it away. Mm -hmm. uh, synop synopsis. Talking roaches in New York. I want to get that. Based a on shirt. a popular short film, this comedy focuses on Joe Jerry O'Connell. Uh, a oh, young Jerry man, O'Connell. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a That's young not man like a nobody name. Hold, hold on. No, hold on. it's not. This was a big movie in 1996. Sex, bugs, and rock and roll was on the movie poster. Um, <clears throat> young man who has moved from Iowa to downtown New York City after settling Holy into shit. his grimy apartment, Joe discovers that his home has a legion of talking and singing cockroaches. Although having bro, so many bugs for roommates, ha yeah, what, bro? Uh, although having so many bugs for roommates has its drawbacks, Joe finds the roaches to be friendly and good natured, and they aid him in wooing the lovely uh, Lily Megan Ward, uh, as well as contending with his mean landlord Don Ho. I'm why telling you, mean, why does the mean, mean landlord always a foreign person? Stereotype. No, I'm stop playing this stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they I usually my, my, own property. Yeah, they usually own property. I can't even. Can't argue with reality. Reality. It is what it is. Man, it is what it is. But anyway, the talking roaches though is just kind of fucking funny. I'm not it, gonna lie. Talking to you. and singing and dancing. It's dancing roaches. You know, like so. There you go. I, want, I, I just I, I love the idea of, of I want to make a whole stream of movies where I'm I'm subtly being racist and mean, but like I'm doing it with like sub sub subverting your expectations with subpar humor, like <laughs> like so. Like, like <laughs> I want to, I want to make them like, like you know how District Nine is basically about Africa, like apartheid and Africans. Like I want to make movies like that now. I've actually never seen District Nine. Wow, you've never seen District Nine? That's a good movie. I haven't. I have, however, started watching The Boys. Yay! Um, <clears throat> I'm on episode three. Hey, hey, every time, do you get the jokes now? Every time, when somebody says there's a couple and they show fucking what's his name, um, A Train, they show A Train <laughs> singing shit now. Do you get those jokes now? Not yet. Oh, so what episode are you on? Like three. 
So you, you've already seen with A-Train, with Huey's girlfriend. Yeah, he, like, plows through her. Yeah, that's the joke. Whenever it's, you see a successful couple, like, being happy and living life, oh. A-Train is like, you're like, I'm a single, yeah. like, what? I'm the A-Train. <laughs> that's the joke. That's the joke. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> that shit is funny. I, 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 it's literally been going on for, like, damn near two months by this point, and somehow it still keeps being funny to me. Like, every time it looks like a, a couple, it was a couple feeding each other, like, cake. And it just it just looked like a black guy in cosplay across the street. He was like, "That shit, that shit is hilarious." I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that is fucking funny. Um, so yeah, okay. One more, one more dream sharing. Uh, okay. Before what were we changing our topic? What, were we, what uh, topic did we have, table for a second? Let's let's, uh, let's let's have like a like a funny. I don't I want I want to make fun of the red pill shit because we don't ever talk about okay. that shit. Okay, we can we can come back to but that. Like you you can you can you, I don't know if you like <laughs> this stuff, but I'm gonna make fun of it because Andrew the whole Andrew Tate explosion thing is kind of funny to me. It uh, well, okay, we're gonna come back That's to that motherfucker with these nunchucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, so so hold on, hold on. This is this is gonna okay, actually okay, kind of freak okay. you out. Okay, so what you got, what you got? <clears throat> first of all, I am told I have a habit of like talking in my sleep. My brother actually like left the room one time because he said that I from like laying on my back sat straight up and was just like babbling to myself and then fell straight back. I'd have put a hot one in you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, cause I, I, I used to, uh, to preface this, I, I preface that I used to share a room with my younger brother. Uh, right. So, uh, when I was younger, I've never really like. I don't really know what to make of the stream because it was weird. They would have killed so, you. The eighteen hundred. Yeah. Oh no, no, one hundred percent. I would have been burned at the stake. You'd have, you'd have woke up. You'd woke up in prison. Where the fuck am I? Yeah. You're talking to the so, demons. So, huh? so, um, and this must it must be like a sleep, uh, a, a hereditary thing because I also got a story about my brother with doing something like that. Um, <clears throat> so. When I was younger, I always wondered what would happen if you, you know that moment where you've shut your eyes, you're about to fall asleep, you're still conscious though, like you haven't like crossed the threshold, but you're like standing on the precipice, so to speak. The moment when everybody tries to call my phone, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So when I was younger, I always wondered what would happen if you actively woke yourself up by yourself like not like set an alarm not had someone wake you up but you pulled yourself awake just like willed yourself awake in that moment right so because of that i tried it a few times most of the time i just fell asleep because i wasn't able to wake myself up um one time that I believed that I had succeeded in waking myself back up. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I flailed about. Like I just said, like in my head, I was just like, open your eyes. Just open your eyes. Like now, you're about to fall asleep, open your eyes. But when you're just past the point of you are now asleep, open your fucking eyes. Right? And I opened my eyes. And I was in my room. Everything was normal. And I'm like, okay, everything's cool. Everything's normal. And I look over and there's like a shadow sitting at the desk on the other side of the room. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? We ought to shot that little. <clears throat> right? Hold, hold on. No, no, no. I was still asleep. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I thought you were Spoiler alert, I was still asleep. The paralysis demon was there? Yeah. So, um it but it it was literally just like a a a shadow. Mm -hmm. Like like uh you know what it was? In uh Full Metal Alchemist, the the guy that's at oh, the truth pride, gate. Pride. Pride, pride. Yeah. Oh no! The, oh, oh, that's my pride. The no, no, no. The, then, okay. No, no, no. The 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 black like Form. silhouette oh. at the gate. My that's what my was favorite. sitting. That's what was sitting at across the room. Yeah. That's that's interesting. <clears throat> I mean, so do you believe it? You believe in supernatural stuff, though. I don't know what I believe. That's interesting. 
I um, believe if I can shoot it with a gun, it exists. That's part <laughs> so then by that definition, if you can't shoot it with a gun, it doesn't exist? Can't hurt me if I don't believe it. Okay. Um, so I'm like, wow, that's weird. And I'm like, huh, I can't fucking move. And so I'm like willing myself to get out of the bed, willing myself to get out of the bed. I finally get up and I'm like sitting there, but I'm still asleep as well. And I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, this is kind of trippy. So I get up and I'm like walking around and my brother's asleep in the bed, in his bed. I walk downstairs. I'm just kind of like per- like walking around my house. And so my mother would often end up on the couch because my father snores a lot. And so she would just get up and go to sleep on the couch. And I like in my dream walked downstairs. She was on the couch. The light was on. Like there were all these things that like I had no way of knowing were actually the case aside from the things that were happening in my own room. Um, so then finally, like in my dream, I like punched myself in my chest like a bunch of times to get myself to wake, like actually wake up. So I wake up and I'm like, ah, I gotta pee. So I go downstairs. My mom's on the couch. The light that I thought was on was on. Like everything was exactly the way. Like, I don't know if I was fucking sleepwalking or hallucinating or if I had an out of body experience. I don't know what the fuck happened. But it was weird. Yeah, that now, is pretty weird. Now, pretty my, weird. my brother, like, it wasn't, like, a, a scary thing for me. It was just, like, weird, right? It, it, it never, in situations like that, it never really is scary. It's just, like, hmm. It makes you question well, a lot. Well, the, the thing that I, was, like, a little bit off-putting was the figure in the room with me. Oh, that was just Gary. Yeah, that was just Gary. Uh, like I, I was, I was actually at the gate of truth and, uh, you Gary, know, yeah. Gary was like, Hey man, how's it going? You're like, Gary. And you're like, yeah, I'm your other brother. They got rid of me before they threw me out. Right. So now this one is actually kind of scary. It wasn't me that this happened to though. So mm-hmm. my, the way that my parents' house is laid up, laid out, you walk up the stairs and you are immediately in my sister's room, right? You have to walk through my sister's room through like a small hallway. Where did they uh, keep the safe? Yeah. Uh, through a small hallway, and that's that was our bedroom, right? Okay. At this point, I had moved out. So it was my brother's room. Mm-hmm. And the reason that I tell you the layout is because it's actually pertinent to the story. Um, so my brother was asleep in his room. Mm-hmm. My sister was awake like, putzing around on her iPad or some shit like that. And all of a sudden she, she thought she heard my brother yelling for her, but it was like, uh, like, like, like moaning. Yeah. Not moaning, but like, but like mouthing like, if you can't talk, like he can't talk, but he's trying to say her name. <clears throat> and she's like, what the fuck was that? She wakes it. She Goes in my brother's room. He's asleep on the cat ca- uh, on his bed. So she just goes back into her room and, uh, you know, goes about her business. And he does it again. Finally, he wakes up and he's like, "Why didn't you wake me up?" And she's like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "Didn't you hear me calling you?" And she's like, "Yeah, but you were sleeping." And he's like, "I needed you to wake me up." It turns out he was having a horrific nightmare. He had the real deal sleep paralysis demon of this like devil woman sitting on his chest, slowly sinking nails into his chest. And he's like begging for Jen to wake him up. That's 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 funny, but not funny in the same time. Yeah. The the irony of him waking up and going like, bro, what are you? Did you see the demon? Right. She's like, what are you talking about? demon like dude you just, you're asleep i walked in there you called me i went back downstairs yeah exactly phone. that's funny so yeah what lots of weird page said that i've sl- i've spoken in my sleep a few times but nothing like what my brother saw um i have no I mean, recollection I, of what happened everybody has like weird weird stuff that happens i remember little little like little sh- when i was a child i remember i don't know why i remember this memory is very vivid mm-hmm. i remember i got in trouble with my mother i just run up and down the stairs 
and I was playing in my room and something pushed me. And then it looked like little people ran from three of them ran from my room and I chased them downstairs. And once they got to like my door, front door, they disappeared. And my mother was like, what, why are you running down the stairs again? I didn't, I just told you. And I was like, bro, did you see the, the people push me? And I ran and she tells it to me just like that. And I remember, I remember that very vividly. Like I never, that memory never goes away. Yeah. And I've had, I've had sleep paralysis before too, a couple of times mm-hmm. where it was like, I was laying down and I, I pretty, I like willed myself to get up, but it took like, it was like every muscle in my body needed to tense up for me to like, wish myself to physically wake up. Yeah. So the reason that I also say that this is probably a little bit hereditary for me and my brother is that my dad has a problem where like he gets sleep paralysis a lot, not like the, like he, he's aware that he's asleep, but it's almost as if whatever hormone paralyzes your body hasn't worn off to him yet. And he'll be like literally like yelling for my, like in his, he'll be trying to yell for my mom to wake him up. Um, and then when he realizes like, okay, she can't hear me or she's not around. He's like, I just need to focus on moving any part of my body. Something on my body has to actually really move. It could be a millimeter, your toe, your your finger, anything has to actually move. And he's like, once I can move it, even a millimeter, Um, it snaps me out of it. Yep. Same thing with me. Same thing with me. But my, it's funny though, is that I've never had it. I had it. A couple times when I got like when I was like I lived in my parents' house, then I moved out. Never had it again. I sleep. Maybe it's it's a lot of little sleep things that happened in my parents' house. But now that I've moved away, none of that stuff happens to me anymore. I would be curious to know if you went and slept back at your parents' house, if it would happen again. You know what's funny is I did, and I had a bad nightmare. Interesting. Every time I go there, it's so. just a lot of a lot of little things. Like for example, right. I used to always get sinus infections. I used to always get like horrible allergies. And I've slept in worse places than my parents were like places that had like horrible, like this place I'm, I'm living in now is made from like the sixties. And it right. has like shit, shit air conditioning. I, my, I promise you, I have to get COVID for me to get sick. I never get sick anymore. But I'm back to my parents' house. First time I got COVID again. Interesting. I always get sick when I go there. I just have weird dreams, sleep paralysis. When I come, but I'm not there. I wonder if, like, they've got, like, magic mushrooms growing under the house and they don't know it. And maybe, it's, like, circulating the AC. Maybe my mother's trying to poison me. <laughs> She's trying Could to be poison her trying to take me. me She's trying to take me out. She wants that. She doesn't want me to get that insurance claim. It's too late, lady. You're getting that money. All right. All right. So we're going to so, segue. Yeah. Into Next our, topic. Our, we're going to finally turn into the real, the real deal men's podcast here. All these hurt people that get break up with a girl and when they're 15 and somehow get a podcast mic fuck women no bitch. you know i that i gotta a, say yeah. that there is an element of truth to what they're saying though hey I, th- and, and every very rarely are things so negative that there's no truth to it because if there was no truth to anything they would never rope anybody in sure like every element no not, not and like like Every element of, of what people say, whether it's like, nothing's wrong. There's not me cooning here. Like, to, to, and it, it doesn't be truth to me. It doesn't be truth to anybody. It can be truth. Like, white supremacy has truth maybe to you. Or feminism has truth to women. Or, like, LGBTQ has truth to gay people. It's a version okay, of truth. Okay, hold on, pause. That's, that's no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. When I'm talking about truth, I'm talking about objective. No oh, matter okay. how you I'm, look. I'm, not okay. like, not like my perception i'm talking about like hard facts yeah there there are i mean like you break up like certain things like masculinity and certain things like that's universal well i i think that where a lot of that stems from is the fact that like and and it's ironic i I think i may have mentioned this to you and mentioned it to you last week Paige and i were uh we're watching like a bunch of clips from the documentary what is a woman um and it's basically like a documentary. I haven't seen it. I have to subscribe to the Daily Wire to get it. And I just, I, I don't, I would end up having to watch it on like my laptop, which um, for the two of us to watch would just be impractical. Um, so that's why we haven't watched it yet. But uh, they bring up, like we watched a clip of 
Dr. Phil, or we actually watched the whole fucking episode. There's an episode of Dr. Phil where this guy, Matt Walsh, goes on. They have um, a trans uh, trans couple, I think. That's what they are. And I say that not as like a, I think that's what they are. I say that like an, I'm genuinely not sure because I was very confused. Um, they have a, a woman who is, <sighs> dude, I'm funny. come I'm on, funny. stop it. I'm not even acknowledging that. <laughs> not even acknowledging you doing that. Come on, dude. Yeah, um, keep, keep going. I'm listening to you though. But thank you. I, I, I just remembered I forgot to do it. That's well, all. You, thank you. Keep going. Keep going. No, okay. Don't say okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then they had a woman who is raising her child genderless like um they have on this child's birth certificate no sex Mm -hmm. um and it's wild to me because i think that when you try to like when you try to force this on people that certain things are a construct like they're they're just not real. Um, I don't even care if I get hate for this, honestly, because I I'm just I it's I I, I, don't I, I, I don't wish any ill will on anybody. Like I, I have a very like do you attitude towards whatever it is. Just don't come at me and tell me that what I you're need, doing. Is yeah, don't don't force me to believe your shit. Well, um, I mean that ties into exist. That's another concept of existence too. Is like. I have a I question a lot of people that tie their existence to like their sexuality and the perceived like like goal and like fight because like it's weird to me and this is maybe just me I like I've liked women my whole life but like I don't think me liking women defines me like it defines it's just part of you it's just something I am, but like I don't wake up and go, "Let me fuck some bitches today." I just wake up, you know what I'm saying? You like don't? I don't. I, not not every day. Maybe, maybe <laughs> just trying to trying to trying to get I'm gonna fuck some bitches PC. today. Trying to be PC here, okay? We're trying to. Get I mean, some, I some I, I can't say that, um, because you're married. Yeah. <laughs> you think about you. You wake up and think about how much I love my wife. Yes, every day. Absolutely. That's right. That's exactly right. right. That is goddamn right. Yeah, you little bitch. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but it okay, so. But no, on the what show, I'm saying is, yeah. Hmm? No, no, no. Keep it. All right, on the show, they had this mm-hmm. trans couple on. I'm going to say that they're a trans couple. I don't know what the fuck they were. Um, the biological male was in a transitioning to a woman no 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 they well so here's the thing they they identify as non-binary which i i think is stupid i i just i think it's stupid and i'll i'll tell you why this is not to this is not to spread hate on people or anything like that but i think it's stupid and here's why when you say that what you really mean is that you want to present yourself in a certain way. Like, you want to wear a dress, you want to wear long hair and nails and still have your beard. Fine. Cool. cool. Like there's, no, there's no beef in that. They, abso- no, not at all. Not even a little bit. But don't tell me that the person that you were born as didn't exist. See, that, and, and see, that's what, I, that's what I think about is, is this... That I think that part of it, what we're talking about the Red Pill stuff, is kind of interesting to me. Is this perception of like the, the reality of the reality of your situation? That's what I question a lot when they when they say if you're talking about objective truth, I think about a lot because mm-hmm. they are very honest about the reality of what you are. Like you're well, fat, that's, that's you're just a slob. It. Like you're like like the appearance of what the reality of the situation is. I don't mind whatever you do, but how like how far along do I have to play or play along with this? Is my question. Like, well, yeah, that that and on top of that, like the the super like what they would classify as toxically masculine guys are like advocating for is just like 
know your role. And, and that that that's not a bitch get back in line. That's a recognize what reality and biology and everything it, in the world it, that we like the natural flow of things tends to push people towards. See that part that part is funny for me. I I don't say don't know your role because I just say whatever works for you works for you. Yeah, but that that's, I'm very I'm very I'm very loose with what you what you what, you, what people define as their existence. That, but that's but I the, give, but okay, we're saying the same thing. You, we are literally saying the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we're saying we're saying the same thing different words. Yeah, it's just the, the, the way we're presenting it. Yeah. It's I don't really uh, care. and uh, but the thing is that I think that this is all come about because of um like uber feminist movements that it's like this is this is going to be hard to go down this rabbit hole without saying things that are going to piss off a lot of people so I mean, we, like, here, here's, here's, it here's is thing. what it is let's we, we've here's, already here's opened the can of worms let's go here's the thing about um, everybody has their opinion on what causes it like i i believe that we are all what you are and what you perceive yourself as is a reaction to your upbringing and your outside factors like you're never nobody is ever born anything you're you're it's all a reaction to who you are like but you are nobody's born anything no you are though no 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 i mean like born <laughs> if you mean like born male and female yeah i mean like that i'm talking like like me, like mental like uh, nobody's born gay that's what i'm saying you aren't born something you become something by social Oh, Social well. <laughs> no, no, you're not. No, I'm sorry. Look, I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm not I'll looking to this. argue that point. Uh, I'll say this with my job on the line. You, nobody is born anything. You are all defined by the actions and people around you and who raised you. <laughs> so, whether that's social economic features, whether that's sexuality, whether that's your, your, your physiology, you're defined by these things and how it affects you as your life. Nobody is born anything. You're not so born you racist. That... You're not born mean. You're not born smart. You're not born dumb. You're 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 okay. born. No, you're, no, no. You're, okay, you're, so that those yeah. things I agree with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you think that if I'm understanding you correctly, mm -hmm. your perspective is that, like, if someone ends up being straight, it's because of the environment that they were raised in or like the factors around them. It's not something you can coming be from much. it's not coming from within. It's it's the environment and the same thing if you're gay or lesbian. It's not you coming from gay. within. It's coming I could from I could be gay, you could be gay. It's just a matter of circumstance. That's all I'm saying. That's an interesting perspective. I I feel like everybody is a victim of the circumstances they're around. That's so all we are. You don't think that there's nope any biological wiring for that? Hmm. Nope. I don't believe anybody. I believe we have mental, like, like if some people are born like schizophrenic or bipolar. No, no, no. What I'm saying is like that stuff. Yeah, but no. Interesting. No, because like all... I, I feel like there has to be on some level. Nope. There are, that just from a from a like species survival perspective, there has to be certain traits that are genetically passed on i mean that's your perspective like if you're talking about like like i i believe like being hungry like horny wanting to like self like self-preservation wanting to live like shit like that is ingrained in you right but like but i really do believe like liking women is like a circumstance thing like i'm not saying like you you're just because like I, I really feel like what you define as what you like is is based upon your environment, your parents, the people around you. Like I could count on my hand the amount of times people the, the the effect people's parents, their lifestyle and their reaction to that has on the person you're in love with, whether that's negative or positive. Like yeah, Paige but is like, probably like your mother because you no, have a good relationship with No, you. no, she's not. No, um, she's not at all. She's not at all. Is she the uh, opposite? Not quite. She's no. She's not. At all. She's she's not the opposite. She's not the same. Is is your mother the is your mother the only female like lead female figure in your life? No. Well, at this point, yeah. 
But but before when you were younger, when you were processing and growing, no. Okay, she's probably like one of them then. Traits and features, certain way her mannerisms, certainly something about the way she moved. That was it. You 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 don't realize it, but but there, okay, okay. But at yeah. the same time, I like the idea that I would be attracted to a woman, like. I just feel like that's something that so and here's why I'm struggling with this idea. Like what you're saying you're you're saying so like as a species, it's just natural for us to to like men and women and everything else from that is a deviation. No, no, that's no. That's no, that's not what yeah. I'm saying. The okay. reason that I'm struggling with it is because I don't believe that you choose to be straight, gay, trans, whatever. That it's something that is a part of how you're wired. I don't believe that at all. So you, do you believe that being gay is a choice? Being gay is a choice. You can choose to be gay. I, I'm asking. Yeah, you can choose to be gay. And like it. Yeah, that's what you like. Interesting. Like, so, being, like, I told you before, I don't, I don't, I don't I, believe I'm not the, judging. I'm just, I, I'm, no, no, no. I'm very curious about like, this now. Like, like, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's an, an I feel like it's a slight on people to say you were this from from like you were this from the beginning. So it doesn't make you special. It doesn't make you different because you're just like the other people. Like, don't take this the wrong way. Like, uh, I was born. I was born black. Right. Me being black does not make me like the most magical uh, and, and amazing and being in the universe. I'm just black. Right. So for me to go and say you're just gay, you're born gay fuck you you like everybody like that doesn't i feel like that takes away from the point of like so why is you like this well because the way your father or mother was maybe because of these environments maybe because of this environment maybe because of these situations like you're the shape of who you are is defined by your existence like if you if you're lesbian or you're a, you're a mean person or you have problems with intimacy or you have okay hold on I believe all that shit is defined by, by well, but your you're, life. So, like, I feel like you're mixing things that are, you're mixing nature versus nurture here, because here's because the thing: because it's a it, bit of both. Why it, can't you're, it be no, both? No, you're abs- you're absolutely right that there are things that are defined by both. I believe, mm-hmm. but like, from the perspective of why would someone choose? to go down a path that is going to be drastically more difficult for them. Um, Attention. What, but what if they, what if they just, what if they don't want the attention? Like they're just like, they feel it in their bones that that's what it it is for them. But it's the exact opposite of what they were, their environment would have typically raised them to be. I feel like that that has more to do with your pers- like. I'm also gonna say your circumstances too on that, but you're gonna go where you feel. I think as these humans, you're gonna go where you feel loved, and intimacy is gonna be tied to something. Um, okay, like whether it's the only love of fam- the only love of familial familial affection you ever felt is from a man. Okay. What if that's what if that's been the case? So you've you've only ever had male, a male figure show you love, and you've tied that to your intimacy. Yeah, but then that would almost argue that if you were raised by, like, let's say your mother died when you were, like, like died during childbirth. Let's yeah, say, here, and okay, you were you I, were I, only raised by your by a single father, no other family. The only familial love you had was from him. That would in theory, then be a recipe to guarantee that that child turns up. Because I feel like it's, it's so many variables that are at play to develop the person you are. Like, think about all the things that determine who you are as a person right now. Yeah. Like your, your nationality, the Mm -hmm. way your parents raised, the way your, the way your parents' parents were raised, your environment you lived in when you were born, all the teachers you've ever had, all the friends you've ever had, all the trauma you've been through, all the good things you've ever been through, all your successes, all your failures, all your romances, all your, your dreams, all your hopes, like all of these things that you think about that define you as a person can lead to so many different outcomes. That is ridiculous. Absolutely. Of, that's but, what I'm saying. Like, I'm, 
I'm saying, not, not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I, what I'm going is, like, being gay isn't, like, one of those, like, books back in the day where it had, like, a secret ending. If you did this page, you went to this outcome, suddenly, like, you're, this is the story ending, you're gay. I don't think of it like that. I think of it like there are certain circumstances and certain e external factors that happen in your life that come about when you're growing and developing your mind that lead you down a path. And then that path could be being gay, being trans, being this being that and i feel like so that's, in theory that's, what you're saying anybody could be anything no but you're also in addition mm -hmm. to that what you're saying is that you could prevent it from being you could prevent yourself from being gay sure i'll go with that okay and i'll, 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 I'll down that hill all right no yeah. i mean i yeah. i mean that's that's fine i'm just I want to like, make sure okay. that I fully understand where you're coming from with it. I, I just because I, I, I hold see... the exact opposite viewpoint on this, and I, I feel like that's fair. That's a fair statement. Depend. See, Kels just said depends on what path you take. I feel, and, and that's what I feel like. I feel like that, I don't want to take away from the like from anybody's existence, like because like I got your, like I said before, I don't really care what you do with your life. Mm -hmm. You you are who you are, but like I I, I truly believe that we as people. You are all defined by your environment and your external factors. Whether you've had two parent household, one parent household, single dad, mother dad, sure, absolutely, two dads, two two moms, like so many different factors are at play into what develops a person from like absolutely. the jump, from the beginning, from like first day out the womb. Take what you, take whatever path you want. You're still going to be a peasant if you ain't got a good job. Realist quote ever. <laughs> Realist quote ever. You get. You, Whoever you, sassy, sassy the Sasquatch, you get a gold star for today. Okay, Close so, mouth, don't get fed. Close mouth, don't get fed. So now, just going Glad back my to... Sassy, it's not verbatim a choice. We don't know our future. Ooh, it's back to chat. Mm. I like that. So to tie this back into the whole the whole red pill culture, um, I feel like, though, generally speaking, though, the biggest problem that a lot of these people have, like I mean, they're basically all guys... The biggest problem that they have is that is not the like, oh, men are this, women are that. It's the women tend to want the, they want to live in both worlds. Like in, in the example of it's, I make it's that, a I what's make yours is mine and what's mine is mine. I, I, I could make the same point for like some men want to do that same thing. There's always going to be outliers. Always. But, Oh, I have a question for that. I have a question okay. for that. So do you equate what when women do what, what what red pill people consider like negative, like a free woman who sexually explores herself or who does like sleeps around, mm -hmm. um, doesn't want to be tied down to no man, wants to live her life, blah, 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 blah. And then a guy does the same thing. Do you determine those as even or do you determine one is living a fallacy and one living as like the best of his existence. Both. And, and I'll tell you why. Okay, um, that's, that's... It, it, it depends on the circumstances of what, like it depends on some things that you didn't define. So, okay. You've got the, the red pill woman that wants to just like, you know, sleep around. She doesn't need anybody. She wants to, you know, do what she wants to do. Does she expect the guys that she's hanging out with to pay for her dinner? Does she? Yeah, that's okay. I get what you say. I get what you're saying. Like, are, like are that. You... Like, does she get to? Is she expecting the, to have her cake and eat it too? Poor people take to red pill to mask the fact that they are fat, ugly, lazy, have nothing interesting in their life. Don't want a good quality woman. Nah, fuck out of here. And same goes for successful idiots that take low quality hoes and expects them to be good quality people. That's interesting take. Wait, wait, wait read, read that a little bit louder. A little Poor bit slower. people take to red pill to mask the fact that they are fat, ugly, lazy, has nothing interesting in their life, and still wants a good quality woman. Now, nah, fuck out of here. And same goes for successful idiots that take low quality hoes, expect them to be good quality people. That is interesting. So, I think that, like, if you're gonna, you can buy into aspects of this thinking I mean, I with it. I yeah. mean, there, there are aspects of it that like I'm absolutely into. Um, 
Like I, I think about whenever I see those videos, I think about my relationship with Paige. And I think about the fact that like we've had a lot. I mean, we're our communication is not perfect. It's probably choose, the choose good quality friends and make a good and make a good, better life for yourself. Then good quality people will be available. That's interesting. Right. If you if you choose, I mean, I, I can't argue with the logic of saying if you only pick up my barrel of brown apples, you're going to get a dirty mouth. But move to a hood and you're going to find a hood chick that will get you drama in jail. Now, see, that 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 it's fair to say that. But I, I, I do. What you're saying is essentially is if you deal with brown apples, you're always going to be dealing with brown apples. That sounds like it's a racist innuendo right there. It was a racist innuendo. I know. It, it's not, asking, it's not an innuendo. No. It was pretty open. <laughs> almost. But mo- almost. That's interesting. Um, no. It, but- the, 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 Sassy the Sasquatch one, it's about how you treat yourself. I mean, so I, I will agree with the, the most important part of life is self-love is, is your most important love. Because you're going to define the people that you that you like based on how much you love yourself. That I'll never not agree with. Absolutely. It's about, yeah. But sorry to no, but like, no, 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 it's all, it's it's we're good. Um, treat yourself I think, first. Oh, she's on a whoever this. Is. Are you a man? If you're a man or woman, you're on a tire, and I love you too in my chat. Treat yourself first. Well, then a woman will see you ain't take no shit from low quality people, man or woman. If they treat you shit, walk away. That's fair. I mean, you're not you're not lying on but that. that I can't no, agree. but that that I feel like is what's at the root of all of these arguments is that like nobody should be taking shit from other people. That I agree with that shit on both the feminist side and the red pill side. Like, don't don't take don't take negative. If it looks like a bad deal, it's a bad deal. Don't yeah. take it because you would because like okay, think of it think of it this way. Like, uh, fuck, I forget who on TikTok said this, but like, the fifty fifty mentality doesn't work. It needs to be a hundred a hundred, right? And it doesn't matter how that two hundred percent is split up, but it both. It, both of you need to be giving 100% all the time to the relationship. Like, uh, for a majority of my relationship with Paige, I was the, you know, typical, like, I would be paying for all the dates, paying for what we, you know, the things that we did. Now that we're married, actually, before we got married, when I started, when I left my job, we had a conversation about, like, you know, plan A, B, and C for how things were going to go. Like, what if we need to do this? And, like, how things were going to change. And it was just an important, like, it's important to be able to have that conversation and know that the relationship is not just based on, um, what I can get out of you. Yeah. And I I, I struggle with that a lot. I struggle with that a lot because I, I I feel like a lot of people in my life only want me around for what they can get from me. Well, I, I knew pretty early on that my relationship was not about that because like the first Christmas that Paige and I were together um she's like oh I'd really like to go to the city and see the tree blah 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 I've actually to this day I've never gone into the city to see the the tree at Rockefeller Center but I was like yeah I don't really have the money to do that right now and then but I feel like that comes from her being your friend too like like I don't I know we were were not friends first I met her and then we started dating how could she not love that beard give me like i want to read i didn't have it bro i didn't have a beard when i met her oh you were you were you were naked face and she's yeah, still i was you? required yeah oh yeah you're not gonna pull a rabbit out of a hat twice so <laughs> <laughs> let me read this chat real quick i want to i want to i want right, to read what sassy, sassy sasquatch said don't change someone else change yourself and others will respect you because they don't want to lose you say if they shit say if they shit test you but you ain't having it and you just walk away and find a better person to date, then they don't shit test you. So you will stay and basically have self-respect. Don't stay in a relation, in a relationship. You shouldn't be shit testing people. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't shit test don't, people. Don't, 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 I don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Because yeah, then, it, it, then it's the mentality of like, Oh, he didn't fight for me. He didn't really want me. Yeah. I, you that, know, I thought about that. I thought about that shit when um, it was so funny because it was so 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 goddamn funny. Um, they were doing a podcast with XQC and Andrew Tate, and he was like, "Somebody breaks in the, breaks in your house and he's downstairs. Who's who's going to go downstairs to stop everything?" And he was like, "XQC was like nobody. We're calling the police." 
and everybody was like up and right. like, like, talking shit to him. Yeah, I like, mean, I so. I mean, my st- my, my instinct as a guy is to always be my protector. Like th- that's just like that's that's I can't I can't not be that. Like it's just just it's kind of ingrained in me. Right. But um, the logical thing to do would be to call the police so nobody gets hurt. But like, well, there's two things you, that should happen. It's it's depending it's the, on the duality what's, of it. But but depending on what state you're in, here's what should happen. First thing you do is you call the police. You then make an announcement downstairs. You better get the fuck out of my house. I've called the police. I am armed. Leave now or face the consequences. And that in New Jersey, you have to basically wait for them to come to you. Okay. It's a flee first state. So you. What's, you, the, what's this home invasion thing? Yo, oh, cereals. What's going on? How are you? Sassy today? Sasquatch. Did you, did you miss that part? Okay. So. A couple, it was like a couple weeks ago, they were having, it was like this red pill conversation. Um, and this, he was like a streamer and Andrew Tate asked the guy, he was like, if there's a break in at your house, um, what do you do? And the guy was like, oh, no, nothing. I'm calling the police. He was like, so you're gonna send your girl downstairs. She's like, he's not going downstairs. We're locking the door and calling the police. And he's like, so you're not protecting your girl? And like, they kind of, they kind of use those. I don't like when people do this shit. When people do this, so you're a pussy if you don't do this. Like, they they box you in with their questions. So yeah. I don't, I don't like no, doing I that don't, shit. I don't love that, but there, there is a, a there's point a bit of nugget of truth that kind of yeah. defines you as a person. There, I, I yeah. do get what you're saying because I'm, I will, I would couldn't let nobody fuck with my family, but right, especially if exactly. I got kids. If I got kids in my house, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, I can't. Um, so, hold on one second. Serial, we're, I, I am happy to provide the vibes that you're tuning in for. So welcome, welcome, and happy Monday. Um, Thank you, Serial, for joining. So, yeah, like, Paige and I have had this conversation multiple times because I would personally like to finish building an, uh, a firearm that I was gifted, and she doesn't want any in the house. And we've had... uh my neighbor had someone attempt to break into their home. And I'm like, and they go on the glass sponge Bob after I'm done with him. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, no. I know. So I, <laughs> then, then the conversation, as we're having this conversation, it leads to the logical question. Could you really shoot someone? And I think that that's something that everybody really has to ask themselves when they buy a firearm for home defense, something like that. Um, cause, cause the, I, I don't know where the conversation with, An, where the conversation with Andrew Tate went in terms of like what his solution would have been. Like if he's going to go them, like, like I'm just going to go nunchucks, like, you know, that nigga, got right. Nun- like, like <laughs> that's, those, that's those nunchucks are going to do nothing against the firearm. Hold and on I, now. If he's Bruce Lee, he's stopping bullets with them shits. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, Andrew okay. Tate got them fucking shades on with the nunchucks. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm sorry. Here, I, 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 let me stop being a dick. I apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> keep it going. Keep it going. Um, <laughs> I don't keep cutting you off, but it's, it's just it's all good. Just, it's all good. I just can't imagine like, like I can see a samurai sword like training as a samurai, but like what what practical use does training in nunchucks have in fucking 2022? Like I'm not they, dog. I'm they, they they actually never had any practical use. They were never used in battle. You're bullshitting me. They're all fake. Yeah, yeah. They're they were what? never actually. They are more. I'm almost positive. They were never actually used in battle because of the fact that they were so uh, difficult to learn how to use. I mean, like, that's the thing about, like, weapon weaponry that makes no sense, complicated weaponry, because a spear is just this. Like, you can just kill a motherfucker. Right. So the the, um, theory on how they were created, there, there was this YouTuber that I was watching a while back that handles, like... Oh, wait. Sorry, I, I know That's I keep cutting okay. you, but it's, it's like you, Sassy keeps keep hitting me up, like right when you you start talking. So I'm, I'm gonna read these, and then I'm gonna get to. We're gonna we're gonna let right, you second right, the conversation. All right, go for it. First, first of all, before the problems, read the law in America. The law says you can kill in self defense. However, other places you go to jail. So sorry, boo boo, your ass is on your is on your own. Ha ha. Not protecting a woman is not being a coward in these days. Protecting a woman makes you an idiot unless she's the mother of your kids. She will fuck another man as soon as you get out going going out of her life within a week. So fuck protecting a man or woman. That is just a date. That's interesting. Man. Y'all, y'all. That's are, a little y'all. harsh, man. That's yeah. I don't know about taste. Because I love look, look. I, I don't. I don't believe in like 
going to bat for people, especially like if you live in like a, if you ever lived in a city, you learn very quickly like that hero shit does not get you saved. Like as many times I've seen, I'm not talking about yell, being yell, a hero. Yeah, yeah, like yell at a woman on the subway. That shit is not my problem. You better no, figure that shit out. No, no, hundred percent. Like, if you're yeah, like, with I'm someone date, though, yeah, a hundred percent. Because I I've seen dudes walk up to girls I've been like friends with, and they just walk up and start touching the shit. I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck. But just keep your hands to yourself. Right. You can talk to her all you want to. Just keep. I ain't got shit to do with me with keeping hands. So she don't want you touching. Don't touch her. Fuck going to jail or dying as a hero for a relationship. Where would they? They would fuck someone else anyway. But like, don't you feel weird? Like, if some dude just like, so you, you don't feel weird? Somebody just hits you and hits your girl in the ma- hits your girl in the mouth. Like you know you know you know that won't phase you. Like somebody just walks around, just haul no, off, slaps not, the girl you on a date with. I'm not gonna be okay with that. Yeah, I, I football tackle that nigga. Like, y- y'all just gonna let that shit slide? Is that is that is that just me? Is that just me? Like going like I can't I can't fathom. Like so like if I'm with you, whether 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 we're married, whether we have kids, whether we're, if I just met you for the first time, you're with me. You're my responsibility at that point. You came yeah. for a night with me. I'm gonna make sure you make it home safe. That is 100%. my that is my my goal for you. Bro, if it's like that, then yeah, protect yourself. But calling the cops in self defense, not like Chuck Norris style. That's but like if, if no, but if, if, so, if so there's a there's a better answer to that. Like okay, it, yeah, okay. Here's, so I'm, so I'm, he I'm, brought I'm talking. he yeah, brought here's, up here's. the fact that like you know you can't just you can't it's not always a law that you can shoot yourself shoot someone in it's not always a law you can shoot yourself. Um. So I, I'll give you an example in a very very like not mm-hmm. home defense friendly state. In New Jersey, where I live, um, you're expected to flee first, right? And what that means is that if you're, let's say, on the second floor and between, uh, uh, behind you is a window and there's nobody between you and that window, you're expected to jump out that second story window before you... Are you able to watch videos off screen? If you like slide the the tab down, you should be able to see it. Sorry to cut you off. That's right. You should still be able to hear us. Um, so in New Jersey, like if I'm in my bedroom and there's a window and this guy, and, and let's say the, the home invader walks in my bedroom and he's got a gun, right? According to New Jersey law, technically, unless he's fired already and missed, I'm expected to jump out that window where you what? are. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's jump fucked, out the window. Right. Yeah, absolutely. On the okay. first floor, I'll go out a first floor window. Like, I, because here's the thing from a, you from a leave my house, you broke in my shit and I'm gonna leave my house if I have a gun. So here's the thing it, oh, it, oh. from the, from a certain perspective, I, I am all about like flee first as you're like, if you're in a situation where someone's in your house and the path of least resistance is to just leave, right? Like you can leave your house they don't know you've like you could just walk out the door. Let's say you're on the first floor. You walk in. You realize there's someone upstairs. I'm leaving and I'm going to and, and I know there's nobody else in the house. My family's not in danger. You know, none of that. I'm calling the cops, right? Mm-hmm. That's where I would call the cops. If I'm in the house and the actual exit out is blocked by them. Here's what I feel you should be allowed to do in New Jersey, but you're not. Like, I would basically call the police, I would leave, and, and I, I've i actually thought about this. <laughs> this is kind of, I, I, like, I've thought about, like, setting up basically a choke point for them where I would see them first, and Not I would be, oh, no, 100%. Because <laughs> here's the thing, the the likelihood of you being clutch with, like, a handgun in your house is very low. Especially, let's say it's 3 o'clock in the morning, somebody breaks in. You better in. be clutching his throat, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, hold on, hold on, yeah. Hollow tip, I'm joking. So, if they break in, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, right? And you gotta figure out, like, okay, I gotta load the gun, all that stuff, right? Now, you've gotta break yourself out of the fact that you were just sleeping. And you've gotta be able to aim. You gotta be 100, yeah. As you you gotta be 100%, room, right? In a dark room. So, so to combat that, I would prefer to be there with a rifle on a bipod that's already attached to the rifle. You're in the prone position already. They come up the stairs. Like you gotta they, have the quick, you gotta have the quick draw perk to do that. You gotta be on right. Dead eye. So like, think of it this way: you're I'm you're tired. coming up the stairs. <clears throat> I've now announced to the ha- like, the first thing would be 
tell Paige to call the police. Like I would be waking her up. So you sleep with a rifle? Like he just says, so you sleep with a rifle on your staircase? No, if I if I was allowed to, if my wife would allow me to finish the rifle that I want to build, it would be somewhere in the bedroom. Okay. Preferably, like in your crotch area, or like would you put? It I mean, absolutely. Make love to it every night. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm, yep. I'm not be bullshit. I love it. Just, I like, I like us taking seriously though. But so, balls, so, um, no, it would be somewhere in the bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. First thing that would happen, Paige would be calling the police, and then I would be announcing to whoever has broken into my home that the police have been called. I am armed. You need to leave. And then I'd be setting up in the hallway, so that I would Gun be compart gun compartment. Gun compartment, yeah, absolutely. Gun compartment. Like in fucking, like I like can training day when we had the shotgun ro rotated under the bed. Oh no, I was thinking of something totally different. Oh. You, you've seen Kevin Hart's uh, irresponsible tour. I know what you're getting at now. Gun compartment. <laughs> okay. Oh shit! People are blowing up. This is the first time my chat has been popping like this. I'm so excited. I know. Um, right? Here's the scenario: a dude talks shit to a dude, then they get into a fight, but the guy defending himself gets stabbed and dies. And for what? Some small beef. If someone hits your woman or man, self-defense, but stay away from them because dying today, because dying today is not worth it. Peace is better. And they said, wait, so you sleep with a rifle on your staircase? And then somebody said gun compartment. Gun compartment. Bro, sorry to break it to you, but you ain't going to do shit when a, a, meth, a meth up thug busts there with a 45 cal. Best choice is to run and call cops. You ain't hey, but what like, if you can't run? Can it turn into McCree quick draw to <laughs> No, no, but see, here's the, the, the here's the, this like the only notion. I'm not like digging at you because I I think you're everybody how they 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 exist their their mind of peace is different because I sleep quite I sleep alone in a pretty safe white neighborhood. I really don't feel like I leave my. Oh, car you had to lot. throw that I, in there, right? Yeah, I'm not. I'm sorry. I pay money to live in this white neighborhood. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna flex that shit as much as I want. This shit is safe. I'm gonna be walking their dogs at like twelve o'clock at night. They do that shit. I'm not gonna get robbed up in this bitch. But what I'm saying is is that. As much as y'all like are getting this chat and going like, like, like he's crazy for doing this. People have to have their own version of security and peace. If that's what it takes for him to sleep well at night, some people have dogs. Are you talking about me? Yeah, talking about you. Like that's I don't. I, oh, I may I, not do. I so just to be clear, it, I sleep very well at night. Number one, that's what I'm saying. Like not like, having yeah. any of this stuff actually in place. I would love to have it in place. I would love but to be. You, it, but if you needed to, but I'm saying if you needed to have that to sleep, it doesn't make you a bad person. Oh, absolutely. Like, these people, I don't know why this, this, there's like this slight on people. Like if like, if, unless you're like a doomsday prepper or some shit like that, and you have like, like you look, you like sleep with a ride shield, then I'm gonna call you a weird motherfucker. But like your level of protect, the mental protection that was required for you to sleep at night, it, it's not a, a dig on people to do that. No, like, of course I not. Know, I'm, I'm, I know. I'm like I like busting his balls, and like all, it's, it's kind of funny. It's, it's, it may sound paranoid to you because that maybe your version of security is different. Maybe you, your version of security is leaving situations. You gonna shoot your willy off? <laughs> my my shit indestructible. But anyway, you know. So what I'm saying? I got a friend. Don't make me like weak all, like that. All kidding aside, I've got a friend. He shoots dick. Oh yeah, you took. Oh, are you the friend that told me he shot his dick off? You, I have another friend that told me. Okay, Makes are you talking about Twenty One Jump Street? I have a friend that actually did that. He told me that. I think it's somebody in college. I was talking. I'm mixing up people. Yeah, no, that was not me. So I've got a friend. It wasn't who, a military thing. Okay. No, 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 no. I've got a friend who has a lot of firearms around his house. His father was in the military. Um, he was a sniper in the military. And so he grew up around gun, co gun culture. And... Um, He's the one that like legitimately has gun compartments around his house. I should give you a free sub just for saying that. He said, hey, true, that thick anaconda should be bulletproof. <laughs> 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 Fucking donate to you. I donate to you just for saying that. You deserve some money for that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, okay, keep going, sorry. No, no, no. I was just saying that he's he's like legitimately got gun compartments. I mean, but like, so I don't, it's funny how we, we made this a red pill thing and we told Rob in the gun chick. I, I have friends that had, I didn't remember this one guy that I used to work with had a lot of guns. And it, for a person that didn't grow up around firearms like that, it definitely, I felt safe, but I felt paranoid when he was like fucking off the bender. Like I remember one time, 
he used to keep like he, he has some pretty serious firepower too. He would keep like two pistols in his like glove compartment, and we used to work at like a shoe store, so we would we would do bank runs. So he'd be like, we would go in the bank, and we'd be driving the bank for like maybe like 150 bucks. He was like, anybody gonna rob us? And he pulled the pistol out, and you know anybody gonna stop us? This shit. And I'm like, if that's what you need to feel safe, I mean, sure. But it just felt like I remember he went through a breakup. And he was like coming to work crying, and he was like falling over the place, and he just didn't seem mentally stable. I don't want to be a dick, but it definitely did make me feel like kind of fucking funny when he was just like, "I got this shit in the car right now." I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying everybody's yeah, crazy. They're gonna. No, you're right. I, like he. It just made me feel weird. I, I don't want to be a dick, but it, it definitely made me feel kind of weird. But at the same time, think of it this way: it's still his right. But there, it, hold on, hold on. Forget that yeah, for a second. Yeah. There are millions of people just in like this country. Him. Million, like millions of people who have probably the same number of firearms that he has, all of them go through shit like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. All of them go through shit like that. Without exception. The like the people that are in actual danger are I don't want to say they're financed by the government, but they're financed by the government. It just feels it feels weird because I don't know. It's just, okay, but Sassy said, "Bro, you can keep two pistols and your grandma with a rolling pin. Ain't no thug gonna be stopped with that determined." Yeah, my grandma, my, somebody breaking my grandma's house, they'd be, be a real. Oh, that's one. that's a shit. different story right there. Yeah, they, they, you had to be the Hulk to beat that shit. But anyway, but I like okay. So we're gonna segue back before we get this podcast. We're gonna segue back to this red pill. We we not gone on like a long ass yeah, tangent no, no, about no, that's it. That's fine. But, yeah. Okay. All I'm. I think the the root of what of the conversation we were saying kind of is is that you I, I I don't believe in throwing the baby out with the bathwater so to speak in certain Agreed. scenarios. I don't think every and I, I'm I'm very even if it's something I vehemently hate, like I don't believe that everything everybody says is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like there's truth to even the, the most bizarre shit. There's somewhere truth. I hate conspiracy theory bullshit. But then some of them shit they be saying be kind of true. And you're a conspiracy theory bullshit guy. And I love you to I, death. You know what it is? <sighs> oh, man. Because I'd be like, I'd be like. Because it, it's it, one of those it, things. It do be weird. I can't, I can't argue everything. <laughs> there you that's, go. But that's the logic. I, I, I believe in plausible deniability. I can sit there and go, I think this shit is stupid. But it could be true. You know what I'm saying? But it could happen. Yeah, yeah, like, it could like happen. I said, I, I think I said this last week. Like if you told me. Four or five years ago, how long have we been dealing with COVID at this point? All this, um, this weird shit, yeah, the, the yeah. government's gonna fall apart. And if vaccine, you had told me that like, this was where we were gonna be, I was like, "You're fucking crazy." That's never gonna happen. What happened? Oh, there's 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 a, a secret cabal of um, yeah, connected politicians and celebrities all going to an island, and they're they're fucking minors. No, see, it, it'd be weird if like. <laughs> If they said that and then like nobody responds to it, that lady got arrested and sent to jail for that. Like it, they'd like a whole trial for that. So if you're going to jail for something, there's like some nugget of truth there. That's but not you, just you, like you understand what we're talking about, Jeffrey Epstein, right now. Right? Yeah, I'm talking about okay. Jeffrey. Epstein. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm for just them, making sure. Yeah, for her, like his assistant Julia Maxwell, for that shit, that for her yeah, to go yeah, to yeah. prison and actually go to sentence, that means there's pl- evidence that that actually happened. That's what I'm saying. You don't oh, just send 100%. people to jail. That's what I'm saying. Like, even no, if, but when, believe- when uh, and I don't want to bring Alex Jones into this, but he said that was going on years before it came out. I, I just can't take the nigga seriously. I, neither can I. No, you're 100 percent right. He's I he's one it. of those he's one of those people where I'm like, ah, you sound like a, a raging lunatic right now. And then I'm like, but his track record is pretty fucking good. He's, and, and, I'm not excusing any of the, the what, shitty things has, that he does. I'm not excusing him. I'm just looking at the facts. It, you it's know it's my, like like you got to peel back the emotion with that one. And I'm like, this feels wrong to say that he was right. But And you know what, my friend? That is how I feel about a lot of red pill people. Right. Y'all motherfuckers look weird and crazy, whether it's fucking Andrew Tate with these nunchucks. Whether it's like the Kevin Samuels nigga, like a lot of y'all are weird and strange and cringy. Wait, who's Kevin Samuels? The Kevin Samuels, he's like the black red Andrew Tate kind of dude. He died. Oh, I. He died. Yeah, he died. Wait, hold on a second. I gotta make sure we're thinking of the same person. He was having sex with a, a woman and got a heart attack. Go figure. No fucking way. No, he didn't die. 
don't, don't oh, drink he Red did Bull. die. He did die. Holy shit. Don't drink Red Bull. Don't drink drink Red Bull all day, kids. It's bad for your heart. No matter what shape you're in, drinking Red Bull and energy drinks will kill you. Like, I don't know why y'all think that shit's going to magically fix not sleeping. Go to sleep. It's okay. Your friends I had will play no with you I- another time. I had no idea that he yeah. had died. Don't, the huge disclaimer. Do not be drinking energy drinks your entire life well into your 40s. Stop doing that shit, please. For the love of God, it is not good for you. Please stop doing that. Like, wow. it's okay every once in a while. Do not, like, have energy drinks every day, guys. Please stop doing that. It's not, it, it will kill you. It's guaranteed because your heart can't keep up with that shit. But anyway, what I'm saying is, is that I can't, like, I don't, when I'm married, when I'm, red pills forgets on things, the most important things. Now, guys, get ready. This is about to flip the red pill. Women are humans, so men and women simply don't date low quality trash. Problem solved. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's the that that problem is the solved. the root the root of it. You didn't, you didn't you, what you said was not a problem. Exactly what I've been trying to say is that whether whether you're man, woman, beast, dog, bird, pig, everybody is seeking the best option for themselves. What to get the it's human nature to go for the best and to give the least. That is the basic. You you if if you know how I know because. If I went, if right now, if I, you, right, right, right now, right. If you went out in your front door, right, and it was a hot ass steak dinner with a baked potato the exact way you want it and a cold glass of wine from your favorite spot with the ice just the way you like it. Or even you, if you, you wait don't a like, minute. Well, like hold it, chill. Pause. Yeah. You put ice in wine? No, no. Well, not, maybe not ice or just chilled. I don't put ice in my wine. Some people like put ice in their wine, but it's chilled. Maybe even some juice, right? You don't know where that shit came from. It's on your front step. You just look around. Nobody's there. It's hot. You pick up the plate. Ten at one, between one and ten, how likely are you to eat that? Not very likely. Really? I am very suspicious of shit like that. If that happened, I would be like, <laughs> somebody is fucking with me. And then they, my friend, they may, maybe that's why you're... Like, rub this in their asshole before they cooked it or some shit like that. Um... This is poison. Like I, I would very some people believe in conspiracy theories. My niggas, right here, this shit right here proves it. Cause I'd eat that shit right now. I'd be like, damn, you know, fuck the government. The government got my. I eat that shit right now. Nom, 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 nom. Delicious. I've known a guy, a couple that's been together for years, and they living a great life. Good on them. And also, know straight couples living a great life. Gender's preference doesn't mean anything. Love is love. So how do you find 100%. real love? Learn to walk away from bad people. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. None of what, no, one hundred and fifty percent. That's what I'm saying. It, it's it's just like you can be in a shit you can be in a shitty romantic relationship regardless of what it's whether it's hetero or like gay like it's it's none of that really matters. I think the root of what I'm saying is is that people by nature seek the path of least resistance. So y'all all want the same things. That's why all of y'all fucking complain. Y'all be like men ain't shit, women ain't shit, and you want to give nothing. So I'm just saying if you want the best outcome for your situation try a little bit harder that's all and don't and stop settling for bad for bad people there you go you want better outcomes change your situation and don't settle for shitty people it's it, it, and and <laughs> all of y'all have, all of y'all have ugly souls because i have an ugly soul <laughs> i'm a good ass person i have an ugly soul all of y'all are ugly on the inside it's okay and i think that's and, a great place to end it <laughs> i think it is too uh, Thank you, everybody Thank that you, joined. Everybody, joined this week. seriously, yeah, who joined in this? Please come back every Monday <laughs> and join this podcast. We love to hear your comments and section. Absolutely, comments and sections. We love to join. You just hear you in the comment section and talk. You talk. Thank you for being here. People by nature are devious yeah, bastards. I'm cheat. sorry, cereals. We got to end. <laughs> what did cereal say? He's like, no. Bye, guys. Bye, we'll, we'll be back on Monday. I promise. We'll be back I, on I'm Monday. gonna try Bye, and get cereals. more streams in and be more consistent again. Um, I've had a lot going on. I got married. It's been a busy summer for me. So I pop first of all, before I, yeah, it is. No, it's a hundred percent my fault. I'm single ladies. I would like to apologize for the fact that I've been super inconsistent, but hundred percent. We will be back on Monday at the latest. I am going to try and get more consistent with video games and streaming. Oof game over. You're married. I am very happily married. Very happily married. I'm happy. He's married too. I'm happy he's married too. He deserves it. Great. He's oh, a great I, guy. I thought you were going to go down a different path with that one. Less competition. No, you. you get too short. I don't want you. You don't like, need I to like, want me. I like men tall. You know. I'm yeah, well, no, <laughs> you you don't need to like me. 
but the women that you were going for. <laughs> oh, <get it? laughs> but anyway, getting married is basically inviting the lawyer into the bed. Hey, Sassy, I love you. You got some demons, my dude. I, I love yeah. you. You got some demons. Love needs no legal papers. That shit ain't sexy. Well, baby, look at these sexy court papers I just got. But don't you want to make her happy? It's not about that. Yeah, it's about hey, a we union. Can, we'll talk about you, that you, more next week. You Come, know what? 